Hi and welcome back. In our last episode we got the, the cranking system working. And in this episode we're going to finish closing up the body piece that all need cl closing up. And once that's done, onto the lens, in installing the lens and testing it out. In the first video I mentioned that this um, rivet, which this arm pivots on, is broken. So I need to drill out, drill out the remains of that now and see how I'm going to fix that. The hole in the uh, in the focus arm is eighth of an inch, so I'll bore this out for eighth of an inch and use a countersunk aircraft rivet as a as a pivot. To close out the slot here, I just use a piece of scrap aluminium, cut a piece off, just a piece of angle, and glue it in place. Here's this close-out panel all nicely gooped up and ready for gluing, now ready for installing. While the glue dries I'll fix it with Clico clamps, also something out of the aviation industry, fantastic system. I've just realised that I've made a pretty major screw up. Land cameras have this cover plate on the bottom to cover the uh, lower moving focus arm. Um, this was missing on the Polaroid 100, which is the victim of my, of my uh, modification attempts. I didn't put a replacement uh, sheet metal over that open area because I was covering the whole thing. Turns out that was a big mistake because I'm getting a massive light leak through there. I'm guessing I'm going to have to remove this aluminium piece somehow, which is not going to be easy being epoxied in place with lots of epoxy, and then cover that with a thin sl uh, piece of shim metal or something, and then make another cover plate to go over it. Darn. I'm guessing that the correct tool for this job is going to be the pneumatic linisher. Pretty aggressive beast, but it's what you get for the ugly jobs. Well, the linisher is probably not even enough job meant for the job, so let's try a carbide burr in a in a die grinder. That was lucky. The vibrations of cutting vibrated the uh, um, angle piece I'd glued on straight back off. I guess the heat of cutting may, might have also weakened the epoxy, but okay, that's good. Now I can get in there and make up a new blanking plate to fix that light leak. For my second attempt to close off this gap here, I'm going to use the bottom portion of the original um, faceplate, lens faceplate with the Polaroid logo, because I think it looks cool. It's a very cool. Um, font they used there, so I'll just use the bandsaw, chop this through and stick it on. Here you can also see the closeout plate I added for the focus mechanism. The Polaroid logo alone is not going to fit that well, so I'll, I'll make up another closeout panel out of aluminium which I'll glue in first, and then this one can go on just as a decorative trim over the top of it. 
There's the Polaroid logo now epoxied into place and drying. Next part I'm going to do, I need to put a piece of sheet metal across here because a lot of light gets down through the um, kick out mechanism and goes inside. Following the advice of the guy Frank who did the Duo TLR, which was kind of a wooden twin lens reflex for pack film, he recommended using the 105 3.5 from Mamiya. This was a slightly longer standard lens for the C330 um, TLR. The advantage of the first version, which was chrome, and then the second ver version, which is black, is that they're Tessar designs, and therefore they have adequate coverage to cover the whole um, Instax or even a pack film format. This lens has got a bit of a sticky shutter. It's currently on, I think, uh, 2 50th of a second. It takes a while for the, for the shutter to open and reclose again. So I'm going to have to get in there and give that a bit of a clean up. To do this job, I'm using the instructions from uh, Fix Old Cameras on YouTube. I'll post, post a link up in the corner here. I really appreciate also the feedback from Fix Old Cameras. I had a few questions. They were answered almost immediately. So thanks very much. The rear lens group was also not excessively tight. And there's a shim in here as well, which may not be that necessary on my camera. It was probably shimmed to get the focus correct on a on the original Mamiya. Next up is the retention screw here, which is tiny. I see on the instructions from fix old cameras that this is just a half turn of a, of a D-shaped screw. On mine it's not D-shaped, it's a full round screw, so I'll have to remove it. And get some tweezers to pick that up. So next up adjust the spanner wrench to undo this uh, this tiny little lock nut. Okay, also not too tight, it's come nicely. It's going to be fun getting that back in without cross-threading it. Must be a super fine thread. So I need to remove this diaphragm connecting ring. Next is, I'm supposed to note this position of these uh, diaphragm and shutter set rings. So, as I'm removing it, I'm at F3.5 and the shutter speeds, uh, I guess, the 500th of a, se of, a, of a second. Not sure if I need it, but I'll make a mark on the body just showing where that diaphragm lever was when it, as I removed it. So it's between those two marks there. At the moment the shutter speed set cam is a line down here, so I'll make a mark just... Set aside the caulking ring and note the position of the caulking gear. So now I need to remove this, this ring. So the caulking gear has the very last tooth in the very last slot of this major gear there. Let's put a spot on that. Cocking lever comes out. Now the two screws holding the speed escapement can be removed. I'll soak that slow speed mechanism in a bit of uh, alcohol to, and then give it a good clean. I also used a video from Mekin62. I'll make a link up here for you. Excellent video. Very detailed, very thoughtful. Really helps to understand the, the way these shutter mechanisms work. I've cleaned the uh, 
slow speed escapement and now I'm just going to lubricate the bearings. Give this bearing a little bit of a clean out with a little bit of fluid. Now for the reassembly. This is wrong because this lever arm here needs to act on this cam surface here. Before I reassemble the aperture drive mechanism, I'll clean off this old grease and re-grease the aperture click stops. There's a drive lug on the speed cam here, which aligns with the notch in the uh, shutter speed ring. So that's easy enough to align. Next up the aperture ring goes on and then we can reinstall the, the ring which secures them. And now the little lock screw hole is aligned so I can reinstall the incredibly tiny screw. That was lucky, I just dropped this tiny little screw on the floor and found it again. The next tiny little screw to go in is the one which connects the aperture ring to the aperture drive. So the next thing I'll do is clean off the actual shutter blades. Before I reinstall the lenses, I'll just give them a bit of a quick clean. So, and there's the finished lens. These closeout panels have now had their epoxy dry overnight. Um, I checked there and also that ugly little closeout panel here, in which have stopped the light leaks. So, I think it's time to install the lens. Uh, which I've also tested that my the CLA that I did on it seems to have worked. I now have functioning high speeds. Oops, just catching my finger there. So time to put it all together and put the ground glass in and see how the focus me mechanism lines up. First item to go in is this uh, gasket. Now 
Next, the lens gets mounted with its um, with its locking ring. I want the shutter relief release on this size side with the um, scales on the top. Extremely fine thread. Okay, so I think hand tight's going to be fine for starters. I'm sure I'll be taking it off again at some stage. Next up, we'll retract the lens. And mount the four screws which cover this area. As you can see, back when I originally mounted the Mamiya lens to my old, while well, I was still using pack film, I've already cut out this um, piece here to make the lens fit. So, and this is what the what the camera looks like. Next up, I'll pull the Zeiss viewfinder off my nice, um, rather mint. Uh, Polaroid 250 and put it on here. That comes off with only a, a spring loaded clip, so I can switch it between cameras easily. Okay, so I'm an idiot. I've just realized I just put the lens on upside down. I wanted all this stuff at the top. This is the bottom. This wire provides the uh, flash synchronization. I haven't connected it yet, but my intention would be to fit a hot shoe to the camera and wire that in. Okay, so that's more like it. To remove the view, the rangefinder, you just have to pull it back on this little lever here. Uh, this one was very, very tight. I had to nudge it with a hammer, so now it's already loose. Just be careful you don't lose that spring. And the viewfinder just pops straight off. And fitting it's just the reverse. Okay, so now we've got our nice, nice rangefinder installed. Next up, setting it up and testing the focus at infinity and close up. To sort out the uh, foc focus on the camera, I'm going to need a ground glass that fits um, in a film pack, an old film pack, and is the same size as, a, as the original photo. This is an old bed from my 3D printer. Uh, I had a nick in the edge and the crack started. And it looks like I should be able to get a, a photo sized piece of glass out of it, so I'll, I'll chop this up. You might be wondering why my um, bed of my 3D printer broke. It's probably because I cut it out using dressing diamond for a grinding wheel. And that's what I used to scratch the glass. And it does a pretty crap job of it. And they generally break on the, when used on the 3D printer. I've watched uh, videos on the internet on how to break glass and I seem to be pretty pretty terrible at it. Oh, that worked. Hey, that went really well. Best it's ever worked for me. And I'll just um, smooth off the face of a slug of aluminium to use as a lap. If you ever need carburandum for lapping, here's how I do it. Once that cools, just uh, mix it with a bit of oil and use it for lapping.
to set up the focusing system I've chopped up an old film pack, cut the back part out of it, um, cut a slot in the top so that I can slide my ground glass into it and I'll hot glue this into place To check the focus I need the shutter open so I've set it to bulb up here and just use some sticky tape to hold it in the open position. Next I'll put a black t-shirt over my head and over the camera as, like a, as a dark cloth. Open up the back and check how the focus looks. Well the initial results are not that surprising but also not that encouraging. I can't focus on infinity, the lens is too far away. I needed to move the lens back uh, seven and a half millimeters before I could get to infinity focus. Uh, that means I'm going to have to make up a new lens standard. Uh, basically something that drops that lens back by that seven and a half millimeters. I'll probably move it back more like eight or eight and a half because I can then add a spacer to move forward again and get a fine adjustment as necessary. I couldn't wait. I shot a first roll of film just guessing the focus. Um, and surprisingly, look, the, the photos came out pretty darn well. Uh, this is now the last photo of the roll. We we'll just ejected. The um, the ejection system also works surprisingly well. Um, yeah, pretty happy with it. Well, that wraps up this episode. Next episode I'm going to look at the new film standard to try and move that lens back um, but at the moment I'm pretty happy with the progress. The back works, the film kick out mechanism works, there's no light leaks so pretty happy with that. Anyway thanks for watching, uh, if you like what you see please subscribe, hit a bell, you'll be the first to be informed when the next video comes out.